In this lesson, I will work out the sinusoidal steady state response of a first order circuit, a first order system in general, using the three methods we have discussed and show you how one using the complex exponential is the easiest, most convenient. Okay. Let's take this uh, first order circuit as an example, but the analysis applies to any first order system. If I have V S, R and C and I take V C as the relevant variable, again I could take anything else I wanted. The differential equation governing this is R C times D V C by D T plus V C equals V S. Now, in general we could have a first order system with some time constant tau and let us say the input is V i and the output is V o, then the differential equation governing this would be tau times d o V o by d t plus V o equals some multiple of V i because it is linear. Okay. So, I will show the analysis using this but exactly the same can be applied to any first order circuit by normalizing its differential equation like this. The coefficient of this is 1, coefficient of the first derivative is the time constant and you have something over here. Okay, So, this can be repeated for any first order system. So, now let us say V s is V p cos omega t plus phi to be most general. Now, our differential equation says that R C times D V C by D T plus V C equals V P cos omega t plus phi. Okay. Now we have already discussed this. We have V C and its derivative. We can have some trigonometric function here, either sine or cos. If we have sine, the derivative will be cos. And if we have cos, the derivative will be sine. So, in general, V C itself has to be a linear combination of sine and cos, so that this equation can be satisfied. Okay. So, V C is let us say some alpha cos omega t beta sine omega t. Okay. Now, of course, this omega is exactly the same as that one. Okay because when you differentiate it, this omega will not change. Okay, So, you have to take the same frequency for these sinusoids as well. So, now let us uh, use this in the left hand side and try to balance the terms. Okay, So, what we will get is This is what we have on the left side, and the first of these terms this will give you R C times beta omega cos omega t minus alpha omega sin omega t, and this term will give you plus alpha cos omega t plus beta sin omega t and finally, on the right side we have V p cos omega t plus phi. So, that has to be equal to V p cos phi times cos omega t minus V p sin phi times sin omega t. Now, you have cos omega t and sin omega t on the right hand side as well as the left hand side. So, the cos omega t has to be balanced by cos omega t. Similarly, sin omega t has to be balanced by sin omega t. So, we have two equations. This plus that gives you that one and this plus that gives you that one. Okay. Okay. 
So we have beta times omega C R plus alpha equals V P cos phi and beta minus alpha times omega C R equals V P sin phi minus V P sin phi. Okay. And we have two unknowns alpha and beta. We have two equations and we can solve for this. So, solve for this yourself. Solving these two equations, we will get alpha to be V p cos phi plus omega C r times V p sin phi times 1 over omega C r square plus 1 and beta is omega C r times V p cos phi minus V p sin phi and divided by omega C r square plus 1. Okay. Now, so the solution is we know it is alpha cos omega t plus beta sin omega t, which can also be written as square root of alpha square plus beta square. That will be the amplitude of the sinusoid times cos omega t and there will be a phase shift, which is minus tan inverse beta by alpha. Okay. And these are alpha and beta. Again, I will let you compute this square root of alpha square plus beta square and tan inverse beta by alpha. Okay. It turns out that square root of alpha square plus beta square is V p divided by square root of 1 plus omega C r square. Okay and minus tan inverse beta by alpha equals phi minus tan inverse omega C r. Okay. So, finally, you will find that the steady state response is V C of T is V P by square root 1 plus omega C R square cos omega T plus phi minus tan inverse omega C R. Okay. Now, the input V S was V P cos omega T plus phi. Okay. So, you can see that the output has the same frequency as the input omega and what has happened is that there is an extra phase shift. The phase has been modified by that much. The input phase was phi. This is phi minus tan inverse omega C r. The input amplitude was V p. The output amplitude is V p divided by something. Okay. So, this is in general true for any uh, linear time invariant system excited by a sinusoid. The steady state response will be a sinusoid at the same frequency, but with a different amplitude and phase. Okay. Now, we can consider the second method using complex exponentials, which I outlined. That is that if we have V p cos omega t plus phi, exciting a first order system in general. I will take the RC circuit as an example. We want to find the steady state part of the response. Now, we can think of uh, this cosine as V p by 2 exponential j omega t plus phi plus exponential minus j times omega t plus phi. Okay. 
Now, if we are finding out only the steady state part of the response, we can use superposition. You can think of this as combination of two sources, exponential of plus j omega t plus phi, exponential of minus j omega t plus phi. So, if we have v p by 2 exponential j omega t plus phi, it's very easy to write down the steady state response. What is uh, v c? We know that for an input of uh, v p exponential s t, the steady state response is v p by 1 plus s c r exponential s t. And it is exactly the same thing we have here. The input is v p by 2 exponential j phi. Remember, the argument here is proportional to time. So, that part will isolate. So, this is v p by 2 exponential j phi, which is multiplying factor to exponential j omega t. So, the steady state response corresponding to this is this s here is basically j omega over there. So, we will have this part of it, which is v p by 2 exponential j phi, whatever the amplitude is, divided by 1 plus j omega c r times exponential j omega t. Similarly, if we have v p by 2 exponential minus j times omega t plus phi as our input, which can be written as v p by 2 exponential minus j phi exponential minus j omega t, the response would be v p by 2 exponential minus j phi divided by 1 minus j omega c r exponential minus j omega t. So, all I do is in this solution, I have to put s equals minus j omega. That is all. Okay. So, the steady state response is simply the sum of this and that one. This is simply v p by 2 exponential j phi divided by 1 plus j omega c r exponential j omega t plus v p by 2 exponential minus j phi divided by 1 minus j omega c r times exponential minus j omega t and this part, you can do the simplification yourself. You will find that the answer is v p by square root of 1 plus omega c r square cos omega t plus phi minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay. Now, to be able to do this, you have to be fluent with the usage of complex numbers and in particular, changing complex numbers uh, from uh, polar to rectangular form and so on. So, when you use complex numbers, you use something known as rationalization of the denominator to add up fractions. Okay, So, that you have a real number in the denominator and also you need to know rectangular to polar form conversion. That is, you can express a complex number as x plus j y or a exponential j theta. Okay? So, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part, this is the amplitude and this is phase. Okay? Any of them can be used and you do use them frequently. 
Now, these two methods as expected gave the same answer, but I have already talked about the other method which is most convenient. Okay. I have V p cos omega t plus phi going into R and C of an R C circuit and I want to find the response V C. Let us imagine another circuit to which we apply J V p sin omega t plus phi R and C and let me call this V C prime. Okay. Now, if I take a third circuit and apply V p exponential j omega t plus phi I will get some response I will call that V c x that is the steady state response. Okay. We see that this case here exponential j omega t plus phi is clearly a superposition of these two cases. Okay. Okay. So, this V c x is nothing but because if I add these two V p times cos omega t plus phi plus j times sin omega t plus phi, I get V p times exponential j omega t plus phi. Okay. So, V c x is simply V c plus V c prime. Okay. Now, everywhere we have only real coefficients, real r's and real c's. The only place where j square root of minus 1 appears is over there. Okay. So, in this V c x, we will have V c which is purely real and V c prime which is purely imaginary. Okay. V c prime will be j times some V c double prime. Okay. And the answer we want to find is V c and that can be easily found as real part of V c x. Okay. Now, the reason to do it is as usual because the response to an exponential is very easily determined for a linear differential equation. So, you do it with a particular kind of coefficient with j omega instead of uh, sinusoid of omega and then you find the real part and that is the solution. Okay, This is even easier than the previous case where we superpose two complex exponentials. We do not even need two, one is enough. The response of this can be written down again quite easily because we know that V p exponential s t has a steady state response. Remember, I am only talking about steady state response here V p by 1 plus s c r times exponential s t. Now, this here which is V p exponential j phi exponential j omega t has a steady state response. Okay, I have taken out exponential j phi to be sort of part of the multiplying factor. I will have V p exponential j phi divided by 1 plus j omega c r. So, s is j omega that is all s is j omega over there. So, this times exponential j omega t. Okay. So, what is V c after all? V c is real part of V p exponential j phi exponential j omega t by 1 plus j omega c r. Like I said, you have to be fluent with converting from rectangular to polar form and so on. I will show that here how it is useful. So, this is the solution. Okay. So, first of all, uh, this rectangular form, right? Let us say you have complex numbers. It is most convenient when you want to add them, because the real parts add 
and the imaginary parts also add with each other to give you the final real part. So, addition is very easy with the rectangular form. On the other hand, the polar form makes it very easy to carry out multiplication. Okay. So, the product of these two product of these two a 1 a 2 times exponential j theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay. So, this is why you need to know both and go back and forth between them. So, I have this part in rectangular form. I know that 1 by 1 plus j omega c r has an amplitude which is 1 over square root of 1 plus omega c r square and a phase which is because this is in the denominator minus j times tan inverse omega c r. So, if I use that in here, okay, all the amplitudes get multiplied together of the different complex numbers and all the phases get added together. So, this turns out to be real part of V p by square root of 1 plus omega c r square exponential. I have j omega d j phi and minus j tan inverse omega c r. So, it will be j omega d plus phi minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay. And taking a real part of something like this is very easy. We have a single complex exponential inside, which means that the real part of it is cosine of the same argument without this j. Okay. So, this is nothing but V p by 1 plus omega c r square times cos omega t plus phi minus tan inverse omega c r. Okay. So, again exactly the same answer as before as we should expect. It is the same circuit with the same input, but this third method is most convenient. Okay. So, that is why it is used all the time.